Hi, I'm Diane Urbans of Urbans Greenhouse um, in Rudolph, Wisconsin, and I'm here to show you how to make a draped hypertufa planter. I have been having a lot of fun doing this all summer, and these are some of the examples that I have made so far. A lot of different sizes because you never know what kind of a plant you're going to want to put in them. We have done Portland cement. We've done white Portland cement. We put cement dye in some of the mixtures. We have spray painted some of them, which I think is pretty neat also. We've also done some of the cement dye. We have draped it down over the edges in its drying stage. And I like the look of that. Except we're gonna try and do other um, paint because that doesn't seem to want to dry. You can use them for succulent gardens, just regular annual planters. You want to put a hole in the bottom of these. You can, I love the grasses in the taller ones and the fountain. We tried that and it holds water beautifully. So these are some of the examples. We're going to do a bath towel today. This is a larger one, and usually my bath towels are between 30 and 54 inches. And when I first started doing this, they said you could use any cloth lying around. That is not true. You need to use a cloth that is mostly cotton, and the bath towels have been mostly cotton. When you pick them up at Goodwill or St. Vincent's or a garage sale, just look at the little tag on them. If there's not a tag, you can sort of feel if it's gonna be more absorbent. That's what you want. That's what's gonna suck up the cement is the more absorbency. I've used a flannel bed sheet. I've used a polyester towel. They do not stiffen up like a cotton towel does. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna cut your corners. You don't have to do this, but I have found out that if you cut your corners, and make it more of an oval shaped towel, it hangs better. So you don't have to get really precise on this because as it drapes, it forms different angles and forms different pleats. So you wanna cut all four corners. And we will be having workshops on this starting in the spring of 2016 because it is just so fun to do. But if you're not one of those gals that like to get messy, you may just want to purchase one from Urban's Greenhouse because it is very messy. I have old clothes on to do this. I have this shirt I've used many times, my blue jeans. I even have old tennies on because as you're mixing this, it, it gets everywhere. This happens to be my cement sweatshirt so you can tell how dirty and messy you do get so you've got your towel ready and you want to make sure that you have it wet when you do this also this is your tower your towers can be pretty pretty much anything except i like it when it's more pliable it comes off of the tower a lot easier i love this particular container and i love how the, um, the drape type or tufa went down it but to get it off of this tower it's very difficult and I usually end up breaking my hyper tufa so you can mend them though you can make up a new batch and you can paint take a brush and paint it if you've actually cracked it really heavy or really a large crack you take a piece of toweling and cut it dip it in your solution put it on your cracked piece and then paint over that it it really does um, do a great job on fixing it on your tower you want to put plastic down a plastic bag to actually protect your tower and to slip it off easier I have sprayed Pam on the, on the plastic. 
on the ones that don't come off very easy. Don't waste your money because it doesn't matter either way. They still are tough to get off. You're going to, you know, eventually you're going to be fitting this on here when the cement is all mixed into this towel. I already have my cement mixed for this process. A large towel I use four quarts of Portland cement I use one quart of peat moss and both my Portland cement and my peat moss I sift so you don't want it lumpy you want it very very smooth you also want to put in two cups of verbiculite and two cups of mortar mix when doing hypertufas whether you're doing a hypertufa bowl or the draped hypertufa should always have good ventilation. Using cement, you need good ventilation. When doing this, you want to use very, very heavy plastic gloves. The thin ones will not work when you're working with cement in this capacity because they'll just rip on you right away. Also, when mixing cement, you want to make sure and have a mask on. Until your cement is well hydrated, you want to keep that mask on. I also use a bonding agent. This is a bonding adhesive that you can get at the hardware store, your cement store. We have used it in hypertufa bowls that we've been doing for probably six beyond years now. So the recipe that I had didn't call for that, but I like it because it, it just makes it stiffer and holds the cement together better. We've been doing the hypertufa bowls for many years and we use them for miniature gardening. We, you can use them for herbs, you can use them for annuals. They're just a lightweight cement bowl. So I've sort of had the concept of knowing what we use there. The only difference is I've had to critique this recipe for the draped hypertufas. When you add your adhesive, I put water into about half of the, the container. And then I add my adhesive and I go glug, 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 glug. We have no mixing instructions on that. We just add a little of it to the water. I'm gonna mix that up good. And start adding it to your cement mixture that you've already mixed your peat moss, your vermiculite, your mortar mix, and your Portland cement. So now you start mixing, and now this is where you get really, really messy. I've been a dirty girl my whole life. Nothing has changed. I think that's why I love doing this. This sprinkling can, you can tell I've used for many years. And you want to add water a little bit at a time until you get your mixture to a gravy consistency. And it splatters. We're going to be doing, as I said, workshops on this next spring and summer. So you can check our website, urbansgreenhouse.com, our Facebook page, or even come into the shop in April. And we like to have all of our events, or most of them, either on a hard copy at the greenhouse or on our website. Sometimes it's nicer to look at our website so you can see pictures of what we're going to offer. After you've got this mixed up wet enough, you can take that mask off. It will splatter into your face, your hair, 
your glasses. And that's the fun. Takes a bit to get it into that consistency. Just want to work at it slowly, no rush. Now we're getting there. Still a little gloppy yet. Add a little more water. Yeah, that looks like gravy. So now we're ready to add our towel. And if you do a smaller container first, which I did at first, I started out small. You want to take those measurements that I gave you and you want to critique them down. Did I say we were going to have a video on this already or not? <laughs> I don't remember. See? All right. I already got cement on me. And I just put the towel in. We will be having a video of this at the greenhouse. If you would prefer to have it at home. And keep replaying it. We also have other videos at the greenhouse. One on miniature gardening. One on a bird cage, a pallet planting. And you're just going to keep smunching this around until you get it all absorbed. Depending on the size of the towel and the absorbency of the towel, you may have some left. So I always like to have a smaller one waiting to dip in and use up your excess cement. And that'll make a small particular one like, like so. Perfect for a geranium, a couple succulents. You don't want to put anything in there that's got a huge root system. And just for the sake of making sure that it's very, very saturated, I like to let it set here for, I would say like a half a beer. I'm going to take this down over by our tower. And proceed to fling it over. You don't want any of the edges hitting the ground. It does not set well then. And you need to really walk around your tower to make sure that it's sort of straight on all sides. And that your pleats are the way you want them to be because at this time you can form your pleats to make them sort of do what you want them to do. This particular tower is more rectangle. I like the rounder ones because you get pleats all the way around. This one has a flat side, so it tends to be a little bit flatter on one side. It's not bad, depends on what you like. And keep checking to make sure that your sides are somewhat, somewhat, somewhat even. And that looks pretty good.
and we still have a little left in here so we're gonna throw this towel in here after I wipe up my gloves towers can be anything you want it to be any shape you want it to be any size you want it to be and we have plenty in here for this little guy there's nothing left in this in this amount that I showed you and I cut this towel so that it would fit and we don't want it hanging on the ground at all because then you don't get the nice pleat it sits on the ground because it done that you always want to clean up your cement right away if you don't they don't come off very good so clean up immediately after you are done and you leave that sit in a dry cool place out of the sun for two nights it's still gonna be a little soft pliable when you take it off its tower but that's okay if you leave it any longer than that which I have done it um, it stiffens on too much and it's hard to get off of your tower then you lose then then, then it's gonna crack So I'll be wheeling this into my lean-to because it's on the wagon, so it's out of the sun. This one I did two days ago. And it's ready to come off of its tower. Plastic, more pliable towers work the best for me. Okay, don't be stubborn today. Yeah. All right. Now what you want to do with this now is you want to put your plastic bag over it for 24 hours, another day, to stiffen it up. Then you take it off. And when we're going to use this for planting, we want to take a nice vinegar bath and go over the insides of your hypertufa. It takes away the lime that is in the, the cement, makes it more plant friendly. And that is how you make a draped hypertufa.